This man's name is Enrico Forti, but to all his friends is better known as Kiko. He is Italian, a surfer, and you might even call him a showman given his increasing presence on television. At one point, he even became the star of an Italian TV quiz show, winning a tidy sum that helped him realize his dream, moving to the United States of America. So that's what he did! Kiko Forti arrived in Miami in 1992, and his life seemed destined for great things. Business was going well. He married the model, and everything seemed downhill in the land of opportunity. From Italy, he incited a bit of envy. Here was the guy who made it. But at a certain point, something happened. In 1998, the son of a man with whom he was negotiating the sale of his hotel in Ibiza was found dead. The deceased was Dale Pike, who had come to the United States to Miami for the first time specifically to meet Kiko. He was found with two gunshot wounds at the head, lying on a beach in Key Biscayne. Two years later, the trial concluded and Kiko Forti was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. In Italy, something immediately began to stir. Understandably, Kiko's family and close friends were determined to defend his image. They believed he was innocent and thought he had been framed. A belief that sometimes occurs when people are unwilling to accept that someone close could have made a mistake. However, this wave of belief quickly crossed the boundaries of Kiko's closed circle, leveraging the solidarity felt towards an Italian overseas. Along with the ever-present anti-American sentiment in Italy, a country once on the fringes of the Soviet sphere, which certainly left its mark. The conviction that Forti was innocent and unjustly framed by American police began to sweep across the nation. Thus began the growing perception of an Italian unfairly imprisoned in an American jail. This notion expanded from family and friends to friends of friends, then to strangers, and now, after more than 20 years, it seems to have convinced almost everyone. Celebrities, actors, politicians, and even ministers and prime ministers of Italy. So, is this really the case? Is Kiko Forti a victim of American injustice? Well, according to me, no. Neither does Marco Strano agree. The Italian retired police officer who encouraged and assisted me in investigating this case. I work on creating documentaries and journalistic content on YouTube. That's my job. Marco Strano, on the other hand, was an Italian police officer, a member of the intelligence services, and is a criminologist. Today, he also collaborates with the California police and is the president of the Italian chapter of the International Police Solidarity Association, Thin Blue Line. Marco Strano has been investigating the Kiko Forti case for over 10 years. In 2019, he published a comprehensive report, and this year he wrote a book on the matter, which is also available in English. In mid-2023, Marco Strano and I collaborated on an Italian documentary, which we released on YouTube, retracing the judicial journey of Kiko. We both became convinced of Forti's guilt and of the groundlessness of the Italian public's objections to the actions of the Miami police and Florida's justice system. Judicial errors exist. Justice is not perfect, even in the US. We are humans, and bad apples can be found everywhere. Was it right to scrutinize Enrico Forti's story for mistakes? Absolutely. But when someone claims to be the victim of a conspiracy and to have been framed, we expect them to have solid evidence to back it up. However, in this case, those wanting to exonerate a murderer haven't even made the trial documents public. How can you accuse the justice system of being unjust if you don't showcase what transpired during the trial? Should we just take your word for it? Obviously not. So, why are we convinced of Kiko Forti's guilt? First of all, Forti had a significant motive. He wanted to buy the victim's father's hotel for a pittance, but the son, who had received general power of attorney from his father to handle the deal, had come to Miami to intervene between Kiko and the hotel. Forty was the last person to see the victim alive, 
and he lied for several days, claiming he had never met him. The body hadn't been found yet when Forty started lying, and only someone who knew that the victim could no longer speak would lie about meeting them. After picking up Dale Pike from the airport, he told his wife, lawyer and the victim's father Anthony Pike that he never met him. Then, when the body was found, he repeated this to the police multiple times until confronted with his cell phone's location data. Only then did he retract his statements and admit to seeing Dale. His phone placed him at Key Biscayne, where Dale Pike was found dead, at the time compatible with the time of death. Forsy then concocted an implausible story where the victim asked to be taken to the Rusty Pelican restaurant nearby. It was an attempt to mislead, where he even tried to pin the blame on another individual, a German scammer named Thomas Knott, who had a solid alibi. It would later be revealed that Kiko Forty had purchased a 22 long rifle caliber gun with his money the same kind used in the murder. The gun registered in Knott's name, and the two would later accuse each other of being the real owners. But the fact remains that it matched the murder weapon, and that Knott had a strong alibi. Sand was later found embedded in a tow hook of Forty's Land Rover, which he had obsessively cleaned just a few days after the murder. Science suggests that this sand could only have come from the place where Dale Pike's body was found. All of these elements, among many others that you can find in the Marco Strano's book, have convinced us of the robustness of the prosecution's case. Even removing one piece, the case remains strong. That's why we are sure that Kiko Forti is guilty beyond any reasonable doubt. And we are confident that Florida justice system did a good job. We are here to tell you this. Many accusations are coming from Kiko's supporters that defame the work of the Miami police, the prosecutor's office, and the judges, but we believe it was well done work. Not perfect, perhaps, but good work that established the truth. Today we are concerned that Italian politics is unanimously aligned with Kiko Forti's innocence. We have had ministers who have taken an interest in the matter and tried to bring Enrico Forti back to Italy. We know that Governor De Santis might soon be called upon to decide on the possibility of allowing Kiko Forti to avail himself of the Strasbourg Convention to return to Italy and finish serving his sentence there. Knowing how things work in Italy, we are worried that if Forti returns to Italy, he might receive a pardon from the president and be released, or he might start enjoying parole for good behavior or other sentence reductions. We believe this would not be fair. And above all, we think it's necessary to help spread the truth. And the truth, as we see it and according to the American justice, is that Kiko Forti is a murderer. I'll now turn it over to Mr. Marco Strano, president of the Italian Thin Blue Line, Law Enforcement Solidarity Association. My name is Marco Strano and I am the president of the Italian chapter of the International Police Solidarity Association, Thin Blue Line. Since 2010, I've been studying the murder of the Australian Dale Pike and the subsequent life sentence in the United States of Mr. Enrico Forti, a.k.a. Kiko Forti. Mr. Enrico Forti was convicted after a fair trial where a great deal of solid evidence against him emerged. With that evidence he would have been convicted by any court in the world. Kiko Forti had a strong motive. He was close to the crime scene at the time the murder took place. He had bought a gun with the same caliber as the one used in the murder same time before. And finally, he lied a numerous time to the police and later during the trial. 
in an attempt to defend himself against his overwhelming evidence. Mr. Enrico Forti, some of his friends living in Miami, his attorneys and many Italian media outlets have accused the prosecutor's office and Miami police of fabricating false evidence to frame him. This accusation is false and deeply unfair and I hope that the prosecutor and the police officer who have been falsely accused will obtain just legal redress in the United States and Italy. The Italian Team Blue Line Association that I chair is ready to offer any free legal assistance to help them. This is all we had to share with you. Thank you all.